This video is brought to you by Viking Jewelry. Hey number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. As you know, I have recently published a video on the new video game Ghost of Tsushima. Now, as per your request, that's turning into a full series. I'm working on episode 2. The video is all in Japanese, so it takes me a little longer to produce. But in the meantime, I thought, since I noticed you have a, you're rather fond of samurai video games, I've decided to create this list of my favourite top 10 samurai video games. So without further ado, Let's get to it. These are the top 10 samurai games that have left their mark in my life as a gamer. They're not necessarily the best in terms of technical features, but they are the games that I have enjoyed the most because of the experience they provided, making me feel like I was walking the path of a true samurai. Arigatou gozaimasu. Number 10 we've got For Honor, a game that is not exactly a samurai game but it does feature a lot of samurai and quite interesting samurai combat. The reason why the game is here among games that are actually full samurai games is simply because of the fact that you can choose between quite a few characters and they all wield a different weapon belonging to feudal Japan. Sure, you've got a samurai that are not exactly historically accurate, they're wearing wooden armor for crying out loud. Orochi has got a katana, Kensei has got a nodachi, Nobushi has got a naginata and you've got a map it with a kanabona not many games feature this weapon now at number nine we are exploring the world of neo now neo is a game that i have enjoyed brilliant armor it features interesting weapon again a lot of diversity and you can customize the sort of combat that you want it does feature a very interesting switching of guards uh, situation system that we do find in a lot of samurai related games but the reason why neo is on this list is because it lets you explore and experience japanese Japanese feudal folklore. The Umi Balls is my favorite. It's a Souls game, so for me that means it's never gonna score high and Souls games fans are gonna hate me for it, but if you enjoy Samurai history, you're gonna like this. Number 8, Yakuza Ishin. Ryuga Gotoku, original title, the Yakuza series games is one of my favorite. I played most of them. Um, my favorite was number 4, the fourth one, but one thing that usually these games have in common is the fact that they're all set in the present, but not Yakuza Ishin. Now this one is set in the chaotic Bakumatsu period, so between 1853 and 1867, not feudal Japan, but it's like the very end of the so-called samurai era. The story is interesting, the characters are great, and the combat is somewhat satisfying. It's not the best out there, but it's a game that is very colorful, and it presents Japan of that period in a very bright way. It's an eye candy. It's interesting, definitely worth picking up a copy. Number seven, Total War Shogun. Two. And we have started to talk about the real deal here. Now, the Total War series, one of my favorite, hands down. If you are into Samurai, this is one of the definitive games for it. So why does it only strike number seven? And that is because usually when I play, this is again personal preference, but when I play Samurai games is because I want to represent, I want to live as a Samurai, not as an entire army of Samurai. But for one of those days when I'm just in the mood for commanding troops, moving Ashigaru, moving infantry, having my samurai charging in, considering strategy and all that, then this game is perfect for it. So if it's one of those days when you feel like having a battle, this might be the perfect game for you. So it is one of my 10 favorites, but with the next one, we are going down memory lane, my mate. Now, before moving to the next game on this list, I'd like to take a moment of your time to show you this really pretty bronze necklace made by Viking Jewelry. This is the bronze Valknut Odin's Spear Gangnir. That was a mouthful. It creates a very interesting aesthetic. Of course, it's based on Nordic uh, features, but for me, this is really, really nice. It's my favorite piece. If you're interested, you can get a 30% off during the first 48 hours of the bronze Odin Spear necklace. And during the next 10 days, you'll get a 20% off the entirety of the store. I personally love Viking Jewelry. You should definitely Definitely go check their site out you'll find links in the description below of course they are young passionate and very nice and everyone has been asking about it both here on the channel but also among my friends uh, they always see it and they're like well that's cool is it an arrowhead is it a spearhead what is it made of what does it represent I find it really nice so now it's your opportunity to go and get one so again big thanks to the guys at Viking Jewelry for giving this to me and big shout out to them and let's get back to our list Number six, 
Onimusha. Now, probably most of you haven't even played the old ones, but I started with the very first one for PlayStation 1. And of course, back in the day, there were a lot of technical limitations. We did not have the sort of graphical capabilities of a modern day consoles and PC games. And the game did have the sort of very awkward early Biohazard Resident Evil 1 sort of control style, which was not easy. But regardless of all that, this series was one of those first samurai games that started to be beautiful to look at and it combined demonic power and swordsman skills and a little bit of trying to figure out where you're supposed to go because you know back in the day games were actually difficult to play. And number five, Kengo. One and two, but mostly two. So Kengo is a very nice fighting game which focuses on realism. Now, when I say realism, you will see that these chaps will occasionally perform the awkward, odd, very weird move, but Generally speaking, the cuts are believable, you can choose your guard, and it really gives you the idea of tempo, the amount of things you can do, distance, and being careful. And that's because you don't need very many hits to kill your opponent. But in the second one, when you manage to cut your opponent, even if you don't kill him, he might start bleeding, and if he doesn't kill you quick, he will bleed out. And the game featured some interesting modes, different from 1v1, which really made it interesting. And you could even create your own style. And number four, we have Bushido Blade 2. Now, the reason why I'm going directly to 2 is because, well, it's the better one, to be honest. It's the best one of the two iterations that they made, which is a shame they didn't continue because I loved this series here. And here is me fighting, having some duels with a friend of mine, and it was great. I mean, this game, you could change your guards and you had attacks from those guards, but it really made it count because one hit, you kill. Occasionally, you had hits that didn't kill, but you could render your opponent's arm unusable, you could chop part of their leg so they couldn't even stand properly. This game was the best in terms of representing an actual duel and I loved it to bits. Now you might think, but isn't Kengo just a better version of this? And I want to say, uh, no. I mean, I don't know if I'm just being nostalgic here, but this game is probably up to now the one game that gave me the best sensation of a simulation of an actual duel where you could literally lose your life. At number three, we are moving into the way of the Samurai 4, the sort of RPG section. And we are moving into a game that is not only focusing on combat, but also on the actual story. But one thing I have to say right off the bat, with the way of the Samurai series, you either love it or you hate it. For me, it was love at first sight, set in a, the Edo period. So when you start the game, you are this lonely Samurai who goes around and then you can choose if you want to side up with the Samurai at the castle, so with the Bushi, if you want to side up with a rebellion and they live in this cave, or if you want to side up with the Gaijin, the foreigners from, I believe it was England, and uh, that changes completely and the game has got a huge replayability. You can finish it off very quickly, uh, but you replay it because it has like a lot of different variations, not only depending on what faction you wish to support, which changes completely the perspective of the game, but also because of all the different choices that will end up with loads of different endings. Make your own blade, make your own style, create a dojo and teach your martial art and you can choose what guards you prefer if you want to go for an upper stance, a lower stance. I mean, this game is just, it rocks. And my favorite was supporting the rebels. I loved it. I would like play as the Ronin and then I would play the game entirely on a new game and this time supporting the samurai and the castle. Fantastic game. It really is worth it. And at number two, we have Way of the Samurai 3. So yes, it's the previous title. Uh, graphically, it's kind of weird because it came out on the PlayStation 3 and it looked like a slightly better PS2 game. It wasn't particularly good, particularly the water. I mean, the water is awful in this game, but the game is very similar, of course, to Way of the Samurai 4. The combat is not as refined, although it is still very fun, particularly the special quick time events where you can, if you're really good at them and it does take practice, you can literally one-shot like 15 people in a row. It's it's a great game and the game again loads of different endings um, It's set in the Sengoku Jidai, so that's probably one of the reasons why I prefer it and you've got lots of armor as well It doesn't really do much. It's just for cosmetics unfortunately, but again, you can choose your
because you'd want to side with the people on the castle if you so the actual samurai if you want to side with the rebels but this time the third option is siding with the villagers with the people so you can be a samurai of the shogun of the daimyo you can be a samurai for the previous daimyo who now became the rebels uh, or you can be a samurai of the people and it changes the story so much and the more you play it the the more levels of difficulty you will, will unlock normal hard until you reach the hardest setting which is a setting whereby you kill with one shot but you also get killed with one shot and believe me this is the most realistic experience you can have with the idea of any duel I'm going to go into and remember this game allows you not to so if you do choose I'm going to draw my blade well you need to think about it because you're really risking your life and it's a game that it kind of rewards you and doesn't at the same time what a fantastic experience so it takes a little bit of time to understand its mechanics because it's quite unique but once you understand how it works it might even be worth reading a walkthrough actually to understand how it works it's great to explore all of its different endings storytelling and so much customization for your character, it's a pearl. And at number one, we've got Ghost of Tsushima, of course. I mean, I wasn't expecting this game to be this good. I've recently made a video. I'm actually creating a whole series of playthrough where I play this game in Japanese, oddly enough. I don't know why I decided to do that, but yes, I do, because I do speak Japanese. And this game surprised me. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best experience. I mean, I haven't played the whole thing yet. I have put in a few hours. By now, I'm creating the second episode of my playthrough, and it's fantastic. Like, so far, it's the perfect samurai game, as far as I'm concerned. Of course, it's not 100% historically accurate, as I said, on the dedicated video. Videos I have on my channel and if you're interested you can find links in the description below but it is a great game it's rewarding it's beautiful as I say eye candy it features a Kurosawa mode um, the Mongols look a little weird the samurai are using weapons and they look like samurais from 200 years in the future if not 300 years in the future there are some weird things but if you can go past them and just focus on the experience then as far as I'm concerned it's the best experience of being a samurai that you can get as of now. All right, noble ones, well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up, and if you are not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. Let me know if I've missed on any games that you think should have definitely made the list, and I will be looking forward to read your comments and see you for my next episode of Ghosts of Tsushima. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. Yes, I'm letting my hair grow again.